Ukrainian cuisine has become a staple in Canadian households and inspires today's West Coast take on these classics. Vegetarian cabbage rolls and spinach, feta and sun-dried tomato pierogies. I'm Garrett Shack, and today that's what we're cooking on the coast. I hope you're ready to bring your Ukrainian on because today we prepare vegetarian cabbage rolls and pierogies stuffed with spinach, feta, and sun-dried tomatoes. Sound good? Let's get started. All right, I have three different types of leaves here, two cabbages and one kale. So we're doing a bit of a twist on your uh, traditional Ukrainian cabbage roll. Please, the nonas and the papas out there, don't get too upset with me, okay? We'll start with a few things here. We want to make our stuffing. So the Ingredients that are going to be stuffed into the cabbage rolls are going to be vegetarian based. We have some mirepoix here, onions, celery, and carrots. We're just going to chop up here. We're actually going to do them in the food processor, but we need to just break them down a little bit so they can get all mixed up in there into our little Cuisinart here. So Ukrainian fruit has a huge history in Canada. In fact, can, uh, Canada has the third largest contingency of Ukrainian population next to Russia and the Ukraine itself. I thought that was pretty amazing. So this is going to be the flavor base for our cabbage rolls. Not traditional. Normally you might see um, things like sauerkraut. You'd find some less vegetarian types with ground beef and onions and, uh, and rice as their stuffing. But we're going West Coast style here. So we've got red quinoa, our mirepoix, and some locally made tofu. So before I start chopping that, I'm going to blitz this all up right here. There we go. Quickly give our tofu a few chops. Extra firm tofu if you can find it, that's going to work best here. We don't want it to uh, get all soggy in there. Pop that in, we're going to give this a couple more pulses, but at this point we want to add some of our flavoring ingredients. We're going to add a little white wine. Just a splash, we don't want it to get too wet. Pour some salt. Need a fair bit of salt here, because that's gonna be where our, most of our flavor comes from and our seasoning. Got some fresh garlic, lightly chopped. And a touch of honey for some sweetness. I find, I, I'm a big fan of honey and I love the movement toward honeybees. So this was really, uh, I thought this was a really interesting uh, fact that, that we found out through our researchers. And that is that, uh, that there's a Ukrainian beekeeper that actually was the first one to start commercializing honeybee production. Don't ask me to pronounce it. <laughs> okay, we're incorporating all that tofu in there. Coming together nicely. Now, we're gonna mix it with our quinoa. Now we have just, just some lightly cooked quinoa. You can see it started to split apart. It looks like little tails are coming off. That's exactly where you want it to be. We'll mix in our mixture. Maybe, you know what? We're gonna have to do this. <laughs> this is what happens when you're working with these things. Sometimes you just gotta improvise. Mix it up nicely. Doesn't that look like cabbage roll filling already? I'm just gonna add a little bit of tomato sauce. So we've just made a very simple tomato sauce here. Some onions, some celery. Of course, some tomatoes, garlic. I'm just gonna add that just to bind it together a little bit. And then our filling will be ready. So as I mentioned, we have three different types of cabbage here. We've got a red cabbage, and they've all just been lightly boiled so that they're sort of tender to touch. Now, you can see they're quite pliable, which is awesome. And then when you're looking at it, if the rib still has a bit of texture, but isn't quite like totally mushy, that's exactly what you're looking for. And take my knife, just run it down the back of the rib, that's just going to soften that up a little bit and enable us to roll it a little nicer. Take some of that mixture, put it right in the middle, and then make our cabbage rolls. Simple as that. So let's make a few here. Same thing with the kale. I know this is a brassica, but, this is, uh, but I think the colors look great, and this stuff grows like crazy here on our west coast. Cut that away, and same procedure. Roll it up, tuck in your sides. Let's do one more. So we got a white kale. Remember, we want to just cut that rib out a little bit. Again, that just helps with the rolling. Makes it a little easier so it doesn't all split apart on you. There we are. Roll it all up. And 
into our bowl. Okay, we're gonna continue rolling up the cabbage and filling up our casserole dish. We'll be back later in the show to pull together our vegetarian cabbage rolls with pierogies, spinach, feta, and sun-dried tomato stuffing. But first, right after the break, we're getting out of the studio. You'll wanna stick around for that. Let's do another purple one here. Jeez, the... the bustling Victoria Public Market, and I'm with Logan Smith, co-owner of Ravenstone Farm Butchery. Is it we call it a butchery? Is that what we call Artisan it? Artisan meats. Artisan, Artisan meats. meats. I like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very nice. <laughs> okay. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what uh, happens here? Yeah, for sure. Well, first and foremost, um, we uh, we have a couple farms up in the Qualica Beach area where we um, raise pork, chicken, and lamb. Nice. Uh, and that's kind of how the business got started. Uh, my uh, business partners, uh, Trevor Hooper and Grant Smith, um, okay started uh, raising animals uh, and um, making things like sausage, artisan meats, yeah. uh, salami, stuff like that. Uh, you know, pâtés, deli meats, and uh, nice. the, the whole business has kind of evolved into, into what you see here today. Perfect, um, and there's such a movement toward like eating local products, eating yeah. local proteins, and so on, so it's perfect. That sounds yeah. fantastic. Yeah, definitely. Do you think uh, we could go over and see what Trevor's whipping up over there? Certainly. Yeah, sounds yeah. good, let's go. <laughs> So Logan's passed me off to Trevor here. Trevor is the uh, co-owner, farmer, butcher, uh, <laughs> chef for Ravenstone Farms. That's right, yep. And uh, you're making short work of this uh, this bird here. Yeah, we, uh, we cut up about 60 or, well, 60 to 120 of these chickens every week to put into our sausages. We're making a Thai curry sausage. Nice, that sounds delicious. Yeah, so it has all the typical kind of uh, spices that you'd use in a, a lar larb salad, yeah. that kind of thing, yeah. Okay. And uh, so we're going to mix these in here. And yeah, we're not and being shy with the spice either, I like no. it. And we're going to dump in some coriander. Lovely. Some coconut milk and ginger and lemongrass oh, and wow. lime zest. Man, that smells incredible. Yeah. How do you beat those flavors, hey? Yeah, no kidding. And a whack of garlic, of and course. A good handful of garlic, <laughs> looks great. All right, and then we're just gonna mix it all together. And then we'll take it over here to the stuffer. Hand mixed with love, hey? Absolutely. Okay, so Trevor, now we've got the spice mix, the ground spice chicken. It's now in the hopper here. What's the next step? We're gonna put it in some sausage casings. These are natural pork casings. Um, and uh, we've, uh, all you have to do is turn the crank for me and, it, and it's gonna come out the end here and I'll just... Two person job yeah, here, Two right? person job, yeah. All righty, so a slow steady pace yeah, or? Yeah, just crank her out. You, you Look at keep that. her coming, yeah. Oh, you're, you're a pro, eh? I guess I can go a little quicker? Yeah, you can go as fast as you want. I'm just, uh, I'm just uh, that, regulating you... the, um, the amount of sausage that goes in there. Right, right. I can see, I can see the chunks in it already. That yeah. looks great. Okay, we've got our sausage links. We've got some ground meat here. What's the next step? We're gonna cook them up for you. So we're going to, uh, I've already put the sausages in the pan to start cooking, and now we're gonna take some of this ground meat and sure. pop it in here as well. Our pan's nice and hot. So hopefully nothing's gonna stick. And well, I'm just you gonna get a little bit of the fat from the chicken, uh, right? The, That's the, right, yeah. And I put a little bit of oil in there just to help things along. Perfect, yeah. Two great applications for these. So the whole sausage links, or you can do like the ground stuff here. That's right, yeah. Very versatile. So we're gonna use this ground meat in a, a nice lettuce wrap. Oh, perfect. You know what, it smells so fragrant. Like you can smell all those wonderful spices. I, I can hardly wait to dig into this one. That's Excellent, yeah, that's the whole point. Make things taste good. Absolutely, yeah. Looks great. Yeah, and again, you want to make sure you cook it all the way, right? Absolutely. You don't want any sore tummies. <laughs> That's right, it's very important with chicken. Even chicken as fresh as this. Perfect. Okay, so the next step here? Next step, I'm just going to take some out of the pan and put it onto your a piece of uh, nice green leaf lettuce. Looks great. Now, artisan, artisan uh, meat shop but you're looking at expanding into some lettuce wraps, and I know you do some sandwiches and stuff already. So. That's right, yeah, we, the, the market uh, likes uh, the shops to serve a little lunch item. Perfect, so well that makes sense. We always uh, uh, try to do some. We've had a little bit of requests for some uh, gluten-free options, so we nice. decided to go there. Well, that smells keep, incredible. Uh, keep with tradition and do some tra more traditional uh, type salads and things like that. Absolutely, okay. So this is a little bit of a, a daikon and uh, carrot and onion uh, uh, slaw. Very nice. And then we're going to put a few uh, leaves of cilantro, cilantro, some basil, 
nice. and some mint on it. Oh, some of my favorite flavors. I can't go wrong with this. And then I'm just going to get you to wrap it up yourself and uh, and uh, yeah. take a bite. Well, I hate to say it, but I'm going for the big one here. This way. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Mmm. Wow. That tastes incredible. That's really delicious. You get all those sort of Thai style flavors with the chicken. Then a really nice freshness and crunch from the daikon and the carrot there. Yeah. Mm. It's a yeah, classic combination, like I say. It's a, a Thai style larp salad, or Beautiful. even you could even think about it as a, 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 a lettuce wrap banh mi type thing. Nice. Right? Yeah, that sounds great. <laughs> well, thanks so much. Thanks, big thanks to Logan, and thanks to yourself as well for uh, for letting me come into your space here and then learn Absolutely. a little bit about Ravenstone. Absolutely. Thanks very much. I'm going to keep you. eating this. Perfect. <laughs> It's back to the kitchen and we're working on vegetarian cabbage rolls with pierogies stuffed with spinach, feta and sun-dried tomato. Let's get on to the pierogies. We're going to make our very own pierogi dough here and it's dead simple. We got some flour, we got an egg, now we've cooked some potatoes ahead of time so here's, here's a secret that uh, most Ukrainians don't want you to know. You use that potato water that's cooled down now so you can see our potatoes that have been cooked here. You use that potato water to moisten your pierogi dough. We're gonna give this a blitz here. We're looking for it to form a ball. And to me, looking at it, it's still a bit, well, no, you know what, it's perfect. I'm gonna give it a little bit more time. Looks like it was gonna be a bit dry, but I think it's gonna be okay. There we go. This is just so we don't have to spend all that time in the kitchen kneading and working away at the dough. We let the machine do the work for us. And this time, pretty simple to get it out of there. And we're done with that guy. It's caused enough grief for today. Now we're going to dust our rolling surface here. Now you can see it's a bit tacky and that's okay because we're going to pick up the flour from our bench and just start to flatten it out. And with our rolling pin, just gonna go over it lightly like this to get about. Now we don't want the pierogi dough to be super thin. This is uh, actually part of the meal, whereas in like some kind of dumplings, other dumplings, the, uh, the pastry isn't as important. But the pastry here is definitely a star of the show. About, I don't know, I'd say about an eighth of an inch thick is what we're looking for. Okay, and now our fancy pierogi uh, pierogi dough cutter. Just a simple glass will do. You can use different sizes, that's just fine. But we're just gonna press it down onto our counter and there we have one dough. So just for today's show, I'm gonna do three, demonstrate three for you here. But you can certainly cut out the rest, that's not a problem. So while we leave those, we need to make our filling. I already mentioned earlier in the show that we have these potatoes here that have already been cooked. They've been cooked really, really well. You definitely don't want them to be uh, hard at all in the center. We're just gonna mash them nicely with a masher or a whisk that we have here. You know, the Ukrainians have been, uh, have been you know, fancied for a lot of different things over the years. Uh, things like solar power, uh, I mentioned the beekeeping already. One of the first uh, mass-produced helicopters was a Ukrainian gentleman that, that, uh, that started doing that. But I think the most amazing fact is uh, that our researchers found was that about 6,000 years ago, the Ukrainians are credited for discovering pants. <laughs> Can you believe that? Okay, so we've got feta going in. I'm just gonna put the whole whack in there, why not? Stop messing around. Sun-dried tomatoes. Now they've already been chopped up and I've reserved the oil. You see the oil right here? Normally you find them in jars in the stores and they have this uh, wonderful oil that's packed full of tomato flavor. And quite often they have, a, uh, they have herbs and spices in there as well. So we wanna save that. And you just get it out of our whisk here. And I'm going to switch over to a fork just to mix it together. And then I have fresh spinach, so it's already been nicely chopped. We can kind of plunk that in there. Some salt. Yeah, cracked pepper. So we'll just 
continue to mix that all up nicely so it's neatly incorporated. And a little mi uh, mixing music here would be great. Perfect for today. You know, if you think this is taking a long time, imagine waiting in line at one of the most popular McDonald's in the world, which is found in Kiev, Ukraine. They served 2.2 million people last year. Unreal. I wonder if they have Mick pierogies. That'd be interesting, wouldn't it? Okay, now, not fooling around here. Let's get into our pierogies. So we're gonna take a little bit of the filling and pop that right in the middle of our dough. And then we're gonna use, I need a little bit of water, which I have right here. I'm just gonna moisten the edges. At the same time that I'm moistening, I'm kind of flattening it out as well. Can you see that? Then we're gonna pull it all together. Start pinching the edges neatly together. It's okay if the filling comes out a little bit. We definitely want these to be nice and full, but it is important to get a good seal because when we pop them into the water, we don't want them to, uh, to open up and explode on us. Okay, can use that fork again just to crimp the edges. And voila, there's our first pierogi. Now let's get another one going here. I'm actually just going to pinch it out a little bit ahead of time. Moisten it, grab some dough or some filling. And again, squeeze it all together. I already have some water boiling. And as soon as I got that third one done, I'll pop it into the boiling water. Now, while, while we were out of the kitchen there, I had the, uh, I had the cabbage rolls stuffed in the oven. They've got a little tomato sauce on them and we popped them into about a 300 degree oven just to let them cook all the way through. Once that tomato sauce starts boiling around the edges, you know that they're ready to go. And into the water we go. Let's crank up the heat on this guy. You can see it's simmering away already. And we'll just drop them right in. I've lightly salted this water. That's important because it's gonna pick up some of the flavor. All right, at this stage, we let those cook ever so slightly. I'm gonna turn on my pan and then we're gonna go check our cabbage rolls. Oh, wow, look at that. Amazing, they've started to crisp up a little bit. That's just okay. We're looking for a little bit of that extra flavor. We've got, you can see the tomato sauce is nicely cooked. I think it smells fantastic too. I've got some toasted pine nuts. Just sprinkle them on top. And I've got some fresh basil here. Now I know this isn't traditional Ukrainian like we said, but this is West Coast style here today. Fresh flavors, vegetarian, delicious. I'm gonna set this off to the side till we're ready to put it on a plate. And let's check our, cab or our pierogies here. So they're starting to float, coming together nicely. They look great. Hopefully you can see that at home. Look fantastic. We're gonna give them another minute or two in there. And we'll get our oil heating. So pierogies tend to be either served just straight boiled like this right out, or you would saute them and get a little bit of crispness on them. And we're gonna do that. We've got, like I mentioned earlier, we reserved that uh, sun-dried tomato oil. You see, you get it in a nice hot pan there. Dancing around already, perfect. And now we're gonna wanna grab our pierogies, let the water drain off them, and into our pan. Perfect, here we go. Now we're cooking Ukrainian style. Okay, let's get just a little bit of color on those guys, and then we're ready to go to the plate. Start with some cabbage rolls here. Kind of want to get one of each color, I think. That's really hot. Look at that steam. Oh, I can just smell it all. Basil on top makes it smell wonderful. Set that gently down right there. All three colors, looks gorgeous. Let's flip our pierogies over. Wonderful. That potato starch in the, uh, in the dough really helps crisp that up, it's fantastic. One, two, three. If I could, uh, if I could count in uh, Ukrainian, I would just there. And last but not least, we're gonna finish with some lovely sour cream here. Because what would pierogies and cabbage rolls be without a little bit of sour cream? Are. I know it's no onions with salt, but this is a fabulous Ukrainian dish that's sure to win over your guests. Chadovi. Now what better way to enjoy our Ukrainian dish than with the right beverage? Today with me from Clive's Classic Lounge is Kate McDonald. 
Hi guys. <laughs> what do you got for me, Kate? Ah, okay. So I thought that I could go classic with mead, or uh, sometimes they do a fermented milk beverage. But I thought, you know what? Because it's fusion, let's bring it back to the West Coast. We're gonna use Zabrowska. Uh, this is a Polish vodka, uh, and it has bison grass infused into it. And the bison grass almost comes across like a bit of a vanilla type. Oh, nice. Pig flavor, yeah, it's really beautiful. Can you pronounce the vodka again? Zabrowska. Zabrowska. She yeah. says it so nicely, doesn't oh, she? Oh, I don't know. I'm probably going to be eaten alive by anyone that's <laughs> <laughs> from any Ukrainian country. All right. Uh, then we have dill syrup. So dill is going to be our accent for the pierogies, as I know that my baba always sprinkled dill all over my pierogies. Nice. So we're bringing a little nostalgia in here too, hey? Exactly. All right. No, exactly. Don't get mad at me if these don't stand up to Bubba's uh, pierogi, though, okay? Oh, uh, I was never expecting that. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, fair enough. Fair enough. This isn't the old country, you know? All right. A little bit of lime juice in here. I'm just going to do a whole lime. I really like the lime juice. Uh, of course, I always do say measure things if you want consistency. But in this, we're cooking at home. Yeah, exactly. Have some fun. Add Loosen a little up. more if you want. Don't add as much exactly. if you don't like the lime. Exactly. Exactly. Just don't stir with your fingers. <laughs> eh, that's where I draw the line for friends. Fair enough. So before we add our soda water, uh, mineral water is actually very popular over there. I think because it's a really nice light drink. Mm -hmm. We have the rhubarb bitters. Yeah, you get it delivered right to your doorstep. Bottles of mineral water. It's fantastic. Exactly. Isn't it? Exactly. Now we're gonna add our ice cubes here. These are some nice big ice cubes. Perfect, yeah. Uh, you can get nice silicone ice cube trays at places like Cook Culture in town. And these are great because the ice won't dilute the soda water. Great. So it keeps the potency of the drink without uh, watering it down. Exactly, exactly. Perfect. And keeps that nice carbonation to it. So we're just going to top. Look at that. Yeah, very pretty. All of those nice little dill pieces will be floating in there. Awesome. That looks Stir delicious. Stir that up. And then if you want to get really fancy, Let's add a little bit of a different color, and I'm gonna use lemon. Just zest it so that all of the oil goes over top of the drink, and then we'll just do something fancy if we want, like a little bow, and just place it on oh, top of our drink there. It's almost too pretty to drink. Yeah. What do you say I drink, and you dig in and eat? I was hoping you'd say that. <laughs> <laughs> Zastotrovia? Is that what we'd say? Is that how you say it? Zadotrovia. Ah, there Thanks. you go. See, my accent's terrible. Mmm. Mmm. Delicious. Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, there we go. Kate. That is fabulous. <laughs> so delicious, and now I need to go wash my face. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Check out our website where you'll find more information on today's show and maybe a few surprises. I'm Garrett Shack. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to savor the flavor. I think you still have the <laughs> 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 <laughs>